You're listening to Paris Search UK Radio. News, views and reviews from the world of the paranormal from across the UK and beyond. Find us on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web. Paris Search UK Radio. The views and opinions expressed by presenters and guests are their own and do not necessarily reflect the official policy or position of Parasearch UK Radio or its affiliates and sponsors. Listener discretion is advised. Welcome to the KTPF Reload Show. In case you're wondering what the Reload Show is about, if you haven't heard previous shows, these are the interviews that were conducted by good friends of mine, Stephen Sue Taggart, in the days of the KTPF Radio Show. Their own radio show ran for just over four years, broadcasting every week for over three hours a night. I joined them in the last 18 months of the show's run, but eventually the guys felt they'd just about had enough. It was a monumental effort to keep broadcasting every week for three hours. It was a wonderful show. But unfortunately they're no longer involved, and the shows have just sort of sat in the archives, so I thought it would be nice to bring them back to life and bring you the interviews that the guys conducted over those four years. They include some of the most interesting people within the world of the paranormal and some not so well known, but still, nevertheless still very interesting. We even have one or two rather unusual shows, including a live seance and um, other things along those lines. Anyway, hopefully you enjoy tonight's show. And this is the KTPF Reload Show. Enjoy. This programme deals with themes of an adult nature and is intended for a mature audience. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the show. It's nice to see many of you on from the start. We have got Mr. Richard Felix. Well, good evening, Richard Felix. Hello. How are you? <laughs> are you all right? I'm very well. Extremely well. Very busy, but very well, yes. Well, I bet you are. Well, welcome to the KTPF um, community show, uh, talk show. Um, just to let you know, KTPF actually stands for Keeping the Paranormal Friendly. Wonderful. So it should be. Yes, definitely. I couldn't agree more. First thing is, before we even start, I'd like to tell everybody that the profession of a ghost, if it had a profession, wouldn't be to scare you. Because they are mainly friendly. Yes, definitely. A bit like Casper. Yeah, well, I think so. Yeah. The sooner we get rid of all this silly, um, how can I put it, Scooby-Doo, Scare Factor, um, demons and all that sort of stuff, then the, the sooner science will start to appreciate what it's all about. But while we're all going around uh, shouting about all these things that are going to get us at three o'clock in the morning, jangling chains at the foot of the bed and going, <laughs> <laughs> This is it. We're going to take it serious, you see, that's the thing. Well, first of all, I'd like to thank you for taking time to talk to us. Pleasure, pleasure. Okay. Um, um, but for my first question, yes. um, I would like to know what makes a man who is so frightened of ghosts look for them? <laughs> <laughs> Good question, isn't it? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I mean, if only I could answer that, I'd probably be a millionaire. Um, so, uh, to be honest with you, I don't know. But I, I, I often wonder, I often say to myself and to people, is it, <laughs> is it something to do with therapy or something like that? It, 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 in other words... I think something that, that, that you're frightened of, you probably have some form of fatal fascination for or interest in. So I've always had a, oh, an interest, I suppose, in the thing that I'm frightened of. Yeah. Uh, and of course, as I said to you at the beginning, you know, I, I'm trying to let everybody know, probably me as well, <laughs> that they're actually not there to get you. Mm. Uh, which, of course, they're not. Um, but I still have this... Yeah. Mm. Oh, yeah. All these years on, I've, I've been frightened of ghosts since I was four. Yeah. Uh, and it's still there. Yeah. As you probably notice from the infrequent times on TV that I'd ever go off on on my own. Yes, definitely. And when you have done, you have been a little bit. Yeah. Scared. <laughs> <laughs> but there's none of the none of the sort of the screaming abdubs like Yvette Fielding had. You know, I mean, I'm my. <laughs> I'm genuine. You know, I. Really, yeah. I really was frightened. Um, yeah. Of 
Of what? I don't know of what. Something, I'm frightened of something that I don't understand, I think. That's yeah, right. yeah. Well, most people know you from being in the historian on Most Haunted, <laughs> OK? But I would like to take you back before then, OK? I, Can you tell me a bit about yourself and what led you to the groundbreaking show? Yeah, oh, gosh. Well, I mean, number one, obviously fear of ghosts. That's, uh-huh. that's the big one, uh, and a, an interest, I suppose, in it, but a, a, a huge, huge interest in um, in history in general, um, but mainly military history, um, battles. I, I've always collected military and uniforms and swords and guns and all that stuff. All I did as a kid was play soldiers, um, and all I ever wanted to be really was a soldier. Uh, and so that's what's that got to do with it? I don't know. I mm. don't know, but that's me. If you know what I mean, that, that's my life has really been the military things and the military history. Uh, and then uh, to, to lead me to the, to the ghost business, and also to, to sort of the TV and most haunted and books and DVDs and everything else. I suppose it, it all started when I when I got involved in in, in local tourism in in Derby, yeah. and became the chairman of. Derby Tourism Association um, opened a heritage centre in an old Tudor grammar school that was going on for 400 years old with a ghost in it upstairs, ghost of a little boy in the dormitories upstairs mm. and obviously tourism and and I was thinking of ways of how can we promote the city of Derby <laughs> oh, ghost walks York do it, Why yeah. we do it in Derby Yes, is it? 20 years ago, and that's really how it started. As you probably know, uh, you know, I've mm. had <laughs> Derby declared the most haunted city in Great Britain, mm. uh, with York and Chester joined second, God forbid. And, and um, obviously it's done the tourist business quite a lot of good in Derby, because we've taken something like a million and a half people on the ghost walk in the last 20 years around the wow. city of Derby. Uh, I then opened yeah. Derby Jail, because of its history, because of its its pedigree as a very haunted place, because I used to take people in before I owned it, before I had it, um, uh, on ghost events. Yeah. And then I took I took the, I took it over, took it on, uh, put it back to as much as we could to what what it was in 1756, and then one day I got a letter, a letter in those days from uh, Carl and Yvette, mm. asking me if they could come and do a program. Um, on ghosts, but it wasn't called Most Haunted, it was before Most Haunted, I can't remember what it was called, Haunting Something or Haunting Secrets or, it wasn't something like that. Yeah. And then I got a call from them later, a couple of years later, and of course they came to, came to the jail, did the show, which of course was quite amazing because if those of you folks remember that one of the first almost genuine, as I believe, paranormal things to happen was when the cross moved. On that piece of paper on the old prison bed. Yeah. In in the in the cell. Oh, I remember uh, that. Everybody went bonkers. Yeah. And, and I was there with them, and I'm thinking, is that it? Is that as good as it gets? Mm. <laughs> it's only moved a few centimetres, but they were absolutely gobsmacked at what happened. Uh, went away, rang me up a couple of weeks later, and said, "We've got a proposition for you." can we come and see you and I said yeah of course you can absolutely and they said well as, as the proprietor of the building and, and as a witness because I'd seen a ghost in, in the jail then we should have given you a, a two minute slot on the show but Carl said but I'll be honest with you Richard after 25 minutes we didn't know where to edit it would you like a job mm. and that was it and the rest is the most haunted history definitely well going back to, just briefly to your your military um, uh history that you actually enjoy is it true that you was a captain of the territory army yeah with the third worcestershire worcestershire and, Sh- and foresters you was yeah i was i was a captain yeah right and how old was you then nine years oh god a few years ago it, it, i was commissioned uh into the into the ter- into the um worcestershire and Sherwood foresters in 1970 mm-hmm. oh god that was a long time ago wasn't it and, and I believe at 19, um, oh. you, you had a bit of a setback. Oh, just a lot. Well, you see, the thing is, I, I actually wanted to be a regular soldier. All I ever wanted to be was a soldier. But at, at, at actually 18, uh, I was, I was um, diagnosed with cancer um, 
thing called Hodgkin's disease, which is cancer of the lymph glands, which was an absolute... And remember, this is... This is hang on, this is 1960-something. Christ almighty. Uh, hang on a minute. Let me think. About 1968, something like that, 68, 69. Killer, then. And um, that was me. I was told I'd only got so long to live, and I said, I ain't, I ain't any of this. <laughs> and... Um, well, you know, they, I was cured, which is quite quite amazing in those days. Yeah. But of course, I still I couldn't get into the regular army because of it. So I I faked my way. I told lies and got into the territorial army instead. Uh, but yeah, that was a bit of a shock to the old system. That was uh, at, at my age. I, they cured me on my nineteenth birthday. Funnily enough, I was in St Thomas's Hospital in London. Yeah. When they came and gave me the rather <laughs> rather splendid news that uh, I was cured. Top and I've done quite a lot of work in the in the past with with teenage cancer, yeah, cancer trust and all that sort of stuff. Raise money on the shows and things that I do, uh, yeah, for the teenage cancer trust because I think it's nice to try and put something back. Yeah, definitely. Well, going into your um, scary career, <laughs> yeah, um, yeah. Shabatar Ian on the chat room would like to know that um, uh, would like to know your most scariest moments. He said. Um, he would like to know what you're up to these days, but we'll get back to that later. Yeah, but yeah. Uh, he's seen videos of you on YouTube with a new paranormal group. Uh, was a pre-production video based on a bar or pub? Oh, that was it, a pub. I can't remember the name of the pub, actually. It was, I can't even remember where it was. I do lots of things, and I, I, can't, I can't remember where I do them sometimes. Yeah, quite a bit of stuff. On, um, oh, gosh. Um, quite something, that was. Yeah, there was, um, I haven't even seen it. Um, I don't get around, to, I don't watch myself. <laughs> <laughs> um, I haven't actually seen it, but yeah, quite a, but scariest place, oh golly gosh. Um, obviously, you can imagine, quite, I mean, if you think that I've, I've done, I think I've done 37 DVDs around yeah. the country of the ghost tour of Great Britain in, in, you know, 37 counties, and done at least 10 to 12 <laughs> locations in each one, plus... I can't remember, it's 122 um, Most Haunted programmes and other stuff as well. I've been in an awful lot of haunted locations. Yeah. Um, and things have, you know, things have happened to me I can't explain. But I'm still trying to... I, I suppose I, I often... I, I, I often cite uh, the Queen Mary on Long, in Long Beach and Cabin 340. Because mm -hmm. that was some scary bit place, that was. And, and I was extremely scared in that building at about half past four in the morning when this crescendo of a noise started in the cabin. Uh, that was as good as it gets. Uh, Bottle Widden Castle, uh, I found very scary, very good when the table shot across the cellar floor at me. That, that, that bothered me a, a lot. Um, um, but, I mean, what, what is this? Oh, well, of course, um, Greyfriars Churchyard. In Edinburgh, yeah, is is somewhere that I <laughs> I don't think I'd like to be left alone. Let's put it that way. <laughs> we we've noticed that. <laughs> <laughs> um, just popping back to your childhood mm. when you left school, yeah, um, you uh, be went into your family business yeah. and record dealing. Yeah, we're a record dealer. I was a record dealer for twenty seven years. Wow, selling pop records to you know. The youth of, of, of Derby for, for... I mean, my dad had been a record dealer since 1925. Yeah. Uh, in Derby, and I, I went into the business um, and, and loved every minute. I've always, I've always had this... I don't know. I, there's one, one attribute, you know, and that's enthusiasm for what you do. And, and it doesn't matter what I do, uh, including selling records, you know. I, I, I have, had a passion for it while I was doing it. But I think you've got... I think... This is this is this life thing is quite a gift, and I think you really have to try and enjoy what you do. And mm. I did, I really did enjoy the record business. Uh, but of course, then it went, it declined, didn't it? You know, yeah. the record. What, what's a record? Well, this is it. I've got a few somewhere. <laughs> yeah, exactly. yeah. Um, and they will be worth something one day. Trust me. But you know, there isn't even a chart anymore. No, not really. Uh, top of the pops. No, uh, no more. Um, you know, the record industry went, declined, and, and luckily, I sort of. I got out of it, for want of a better word, into the tourism game, um, heritage game, local history, and then, of course, 
20 years ago, the, the ghost business. Yeah. You, you campaigned um, during this time um, to set up an exhibition centre in Queen Street. Did you ever get to still, that? Still working, on it. still working hard on that in Derby. Yeah. Um, it, in fact, it was a building that was featured on when we did Most Haunted Live. We did the Derby one. Mm. We actually went in, we did that building. Very, very, very famous building. Uh, and I'm campaigning at the moment to still, to try and get... Because at the moment, I mean, without boring everyone with all the details, it, it, it was the home of the first Astronomer Royal, uh, the guy that King Charles II commissioned Sir Christopher Wren to build the Royal Observatory at Greenwich for. In fact, this guy was named was John Flamsteed. And no John Flamsteed, no Greenwich meantime. That's how important he was. Um, and then other famous people lived in the building as well. And, and it, it sort of... Well, it's not empty because it's got squatters in it. They've got, they're on drugs, they've got no electricity, and they've got paraffin lamps. Mm. And the building could burn down tonight while I'm talking to you now. Wow. So I'm trying to save it. Yeah. And actually open it up because it's haunted, which is even better. Um, and and open, create an experience in there called time. Yeah. Telling the story of, of time in the building that played such an important part in... in in time, if you know what I mean. Yeah. Uh, including ghost business and, and, you know, time slips and all that sort of thing. I believe quite a lot of the, the ghost business is mm. with, with, you know, with time. Well, talking about the history and everything, yeah. Um, yeah. Joe would like to know, where's the best place to go to find the history on these haunted places that we go to? Obviously, there's libraries and that, but is there anywhere else? Difficult one. I mean, obviously, obviously books. Um, internet, yeah, but you've got to be, you've got to be so careful. We, I think you have any over the internet. You, you, you can't take everything that's on the internet as, as, as the gospel truth, as you probably know what it's saying with anything in print. But um, the internet, yeah. Um, local studies libraries are, are really the best form of information. Yeah. I, I've always found that. Where I mean, in, in the early Most Haunted days, first thing I used to do was get up, go off to the local studies library in whatever town, city, village that I was in, if they'd got one, and, and try and look up, try and authenticate the history behind the haunting. Mm. Where I, you know, I, I believe that you need to know who the, who the ghost is, why it's still there, what happened to it that's caused it still to be there, that sort of thing. Uh, and the local studies library, and and of course talking to the people that occupy the building. I yeah. mean the live people yeah. occupy the building. Yeah. Be it a museum, a, ho a hospital, a hotel, a pub, or even a private home. Uh, and I, you know, a lot of people say to me, you know, when do you do your research? And I said, well, my research, my genuine, the real research, really starts when I arrive at the building. Yeah, definitely. Talking to people. Mm. And and. Where are your books concerned? We've got Anita. She's in Minnesota. Oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, and uh, with her husband, John. Yeah. And uh, she would like to know, what advice would you give on getting a b ghost book published? Good point. Well, I mean, uh, I, I, I used to go, I used to have a publisher that, that did them. Um, and two things. Number, number one, you don't make a lot of profit. Mm out of the publisher that's the trouble you either get five percent or ten percent um you're never sure how much they how many they've sold they can tell you anything they want to be quite honest with you um and so i did uh, quite a few of them i had toys and then uh we actually took over publishing it ourselves so we actually sold the last one over the last three uh, ghosts of merseyside ghosts of the west midlands and and what is a ghost yeah. Uh, we actually published ourselves. We, we, um, my son Wells, who runs Felix Films, uh, looked at the books and said, I could do a better job than this, Dad. <laughs> and did the whole lot from day I wrote them. He set them out, typeset it, did the lot, got it correct, ready, and then, then sent, got a printer mm. uh, in Ireland, I think, to actually you know, come up with the books for us. Yeah. So you can do it yourself. Um, there is a there is a company that my very good friend uh, Chris Conway um, went to to get his book published, and I'm trying to think of the name of it. Um, something like Luby Lou, or it isn't Luby Lou, but it's something <laughs> like that. 
Yeah. Uh, and they will do it. They will actually publish it for you, uh, and you can order as many copies as you want. You can right. pub, ring. A, you can order five copies if you want. Yeah. And sort of digitally. Uh, or the other one, of course, is you know create a monster uh, of a book that Harper Collins are desperately asking you to let them have. Yeah. Is the other way. Yeah. Um, Shabba's back again. He would like to know if there's any haunted place that you've always wanted to go to but have never actually had the chance to investigate. Yes, absolutely. Well, number one has to be the Tower of London. Tower of London. Oh, yeah, that would be good, wouldn't well, it? Well, it's got to be... I, I it. it must be the most haunted place on the planet. Yeah. Um, and, and, of course, it, being a royal resident still, Mm-hmm. Um, they don't really do ghosts, you know. You can hire it, apparently, for 10,000 quid. Wow. Uh, yeah, but but I don't know whether they let you do ghost events, even mm. Um So, yeah, that's got to be the one. But the other one, of course, the big one I'd love to do is the Alamo. Oh, yeah. Uh, very much love to do the Alamo. Because, so, again, battles, and I, I'm, I'm sort of yeah. very much into battlefield ghosts. Well, I, I, I had a dream about going to Romania once. Right. And because I like Dracula, and I just started wow. to contact Bran Castle just to, off, just to see what happened, and uh, I finally got it. <laughs> We're going back again next year to investigate. Fantastic! <laughs> oh, good yeah, fun. It's a must do place, mustn't it? it? Oh, it is. It was really good this year. I never thought we'd go back again, but we're going yeah. back again. And uh, mind you, they originally wanted three and a half. Right. And we got them down to two and a half. Not bad. So, you know... Um, that, is that for the whole castle? That is for 100% of it. That's not bad, is it, eh? No. You know, I'm on about 1,000, dear. <laughs> Sorry? I'm on about 1,000, not 100. Oh, I know that. <laughs> <laughs> and I thought, well, I'll put it out there and see what happens, and we've got about four or five places left. Yeah, I should think so as well. So, you know, it's really good. Yeah. So, um, also... Uh, one of the questions I do want to ask you, which coincides with the other part of Ian's question, yes. um, we had a, an email come through because we asked people to email us questions if they didn't want to ring up or anything. Yeah. 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 Um, and Chris Whitehouse from Pennine Paranormal Society, yeah. he asked, if a spirit is basically our human energy, yeah. then why do we see ghosts with clothes on, which is partly uh, what oh. Ian was asking, what is actually a ghost? Right, what is a ghost? Well, they're going to have to buy the book. <laughs> and sign copies available, which is cool. It's the whole point. It's called What is a Ghost? Um, and, uh, right, the, the, to be honest with you, the, this is me, and remember, I'm, I'm not an expert. No. I'm just a bloke that's fascinated by it and has done a lot of research and is trying to bring the reality of the ghost business. And in my humble opinion, I believe there are two types of a ghost. And remember that that is just a word that is actually... Uh, a 3,000 year old proto-Indo-European word which means to be frightened of. Mm. That's it. Goiz. G-H-O-I-Z was this word that means to be frightened of. And then in Old, uh, in old English we had ghast, G-H-A-S-T, Middle English ghost, uh, Saxon and German geist, and they all mean the same thing. They all mean, they come from goiz, which means to be frightened of. And think about it, have you ever seen something ghastly? Mm. Ghast? Anything ever been aghast at something? You're frightened of it. Yeah. And you don't understand it. So mm. that's the first part of the... the, the, the in I, what I believe is two... I think number one makes up about 40%, and I believe that to be the spirit and soul of a dead person. Yeah. Intelligence. Mm -hmm. An energy source. Because I, I think it's about time we change the name from a ghost to an energy. Yeah. Because that's what they are. It's an energy thing. Mm -hmm. And I think 40% is the spirit and soul of a dead person that can come back. Sorry, I don't actually think they've ever gone anywhere. No. I think they're around. I think this crap about granddad's up there in the sky, how many hundred thousand miles away, and, and can come back is rubbish because I don't think they've ever left us. I think they're around either in a different dimension, spiritual plane, frequency, somewhere. In yeah. other words, I don't believe they've actually gone. I think they're they're with us and can can come through, for want of a better word, and come to us if we're in trouble, if they haven't seen the grandkids, whatever that sort of thing. Uh, and I believe that to be an an entity, a spirit and soul of a dead person 
that is an intelligence that hasn't moved on for whatever reason because it's got, got unfinished business uh, it doesn't know it's dead it likes it here so much that it stayed behind mm. or the, my big one is because it's frightened to move on because of the teachings of the church because in other words it's terrified of burning in hell for what it did in its, in its life uh, but I think that's the first part of the ghost and the second part which is where this gentleman asked about ghosts with clothes on I think the other, the other 60 percent of what we see and hear and mistakenly call a ghost if you like because remember it is an M image of a dead person is a recording held in the fabric of the building stone tape theory all that sort yeah of. it's not an intelligence it can't interact with you it is nothing more than a recording and the reason it's got clothes on because that's how it was how the recording was made with his clothes on, luckily. Right. Okay. Can I talk to you about Most Haunted? Yes. Good. I've got some questions here for you, so be mm. prepared. Yeah. Okay. Um, right. I've got a few others here um, as well. Uh, right. First of all, I was asked by Simply Joe, did you tell the mediums the history before they went in? No, 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 no. Gosh. No, I most certainly didn't. Um... <laughs> Whether anybody else did, I don't know. Um, but no, absolutely, definitely not. I mean, number one, the the the, the, his, the sorry, the, the medium never turned up until about five o'clock in the evening. We we've always, we'd been there since nine o'clock. Yeah. Doing whatever. I've been doing my research, talking to people, going about that, and they were brought in. And no, I, I didn't. And as far as I know, no one else did. But of course, I, I can't be. I'm not party to what else, what happened. No. I, I didn't. Uh, I actually got my fingers wrapped very seriously when we were down in uh, in Cornwall. Mm -hmm. And um, we went. We all went out in the afternoon. We'd, we'd done a shoot. I can't remember where it was. Tango Thick Castle, I think. And we were in this Cornish town. I can't remember the name. We all went into, um, into a cafe. And... Then Derek and Gwen came in. Yeah. And they were sat at a different table. And the guy behind the, in the, in the cafe was talking to us about the show. And uh, <laughs> Mr. Big Gob here uh, said, oh, yeah, yeah, we're going to, we're, we're actually, we've been here filming, we were filming at so and so yesterday, and we're off to the Jamaica Inn tomorrow. Mm. And I got kicked and pummeled and <laughs> <laughs> quite seriously told, oh, yeah, because <coughs> I'd let it out the bag. Yeah. Um, but no, honestly, I, I, apart from that time, which was a pure mistake, mm. um, I, I did not tell the, the uh, medium anything, no. Right, um, there's rumours that it's coming back. Rubbish. And if it... <laughs> rubbish. <laughs> Never come back. And if that it did, that, that answers that question, but if it did, would you do it again? Would I do it again? That's a very good point, that is. Um, gosh, you see, you've got to remember that it... <laughs> It was, a, it was a phenomena. We, we got more viewers than The Simpsons. Yeah, even when people were dissing it, you still got people watching it. Oh, come on. And people used to diss Derek, and they used to say he's a fake, and this is that, and then David Wells was a fake, and Gordon Smith was a fake, and all mediums are fake, and this and that, the other. And, and, but at the end of the day, people watched it. And yeah. even with Derek, they'd say, oh, yeah, yeah, but, you know, we don't believe it. because he, But we had to watch it to see what he was going to get up to tonight. Yeah. And, and they loved him. Mm. He is a, a very, very lovable guy. And, and there is another... But remember that it was an entertainment show. It was rebranded after... I can't remember if it was Ofcom or Oftel. I don't know. I think it's Ofcom. Um, were, were, were researching into them. And they, they sort of... They rebranded the show as an entertainment programme with a certain amount of showmanship. Yeah. And it was. And... What can I say? Um, would I go back on it? I, I, I don't have a problem. I no. Have a problem because again, you've got to remember what, how much good it's, it's done me mm. in my profession. Because remember, this is my this is my profession and has been now for twenty years. Uh, and so, if if they asked me, <laughs> I yeah. don't think they would. But if they did, yeah, why not? So, do you have any ghosts in your house? No. 
somebody has to act. Oh, I live in a, I live in a, uh, on a medieval moated site, uh, a third of a mile across the fields in the right. middle of nowhere, in a house that goes back, well, the, the present house goes back to 1690. And would you believe we ain't got a ghost? No, and you've not, you've not had any ghosts of your own family? Sorry? Pardon? Again, Have you had any ghosts of your own family? Oh, yeah, my dad. Right. My dad's uh, travelled with me. Okay. Yeah. Which That's nice to know. Amazing. Yeah. But no, I do not live in a haunted house. Well, I, hang on. What did Longfellow said? Say, all houses wherein men have lived and died are haunted houses. <laughs> right, okay. We're going back to... Um, here. We're going back to Minnesota for this next yeah. one, Richard. Um, John, Anita's other half. Yes. Okay, he would like to know, with your history of um, being, um, you know, into the military and that, have you ever done any research into the Hastings Battleground? Have you ever investigated well, it? Battle of Hastings, no. Would it be interesting to do? Sorry? I know we, we did once for a charity, we did uh, Marsden Moor, um, you, know, uh, a battle, you know, the Battleground, we did that for a charity. Yeah. Um, but... If it was possible to do, would you be interested in investigating that? Yeah, because you see, I'm very, as I've said, I'm very into uh, battlefield ghosts. Um, I've done, um, what have I done? I've done Gettysburg. Yeah. Uh, obviously in Pennsylvania, probably the most haunted battlefield on the planet. I've done, uh, oh gosh, uh, the Battle of Sedgemoor. I've done that with Derek. We've, we've created a, a pilot for a TV show that we've actually never done anything with. Mm. Five and a half hours of me and Derek on the battlefield at Sedgemoor. God. <laughs> yet. Yeah, we, we did battle, Battlefield Paranormal uh, this year for Marsden Moor, didn't we? And we did it for Macmillan Nurses, didn't we? Yeah. So, you know. Um, anything happen? No, not really. We had some people thought they heard um, we had, we had a lot of, cannon uh, fire. Oh, really? Yeah, we had cannon fire. Yeah, we, we had shadows we in We had field. horses and, and horses. a lot of movement. Yeah. But mm. I, think, honest, I think we should have done it the following are, day, to be honest. In my opinion, probably the most underestimated haunted sites on the planet. Yeah. Because, you see, until very recently, the only people that went on the battlefield was either the farmer or the guy walking his dog. Yeah. Since reenactments come on the scene... People have reported lots of ghosts because they they have all the ingredients this is it. for haunting. Yeah, yeah. Suicide, murder, body never found, mm. body blown to pieces. Um, oh gosh! Every, I mean, think of this one, right, guys? We've got you've got two. You're, right, let's take the Battle of Marston Moor, or let's take the Battle of Sedgemoor. Uh, of uh, not Sedgemoor, yes, Sedgemoor, and also um, uh, Gettysburg. Right, we have two opposing armies. With the same God. Mm. Think about that. And one of the Ten Commandments is, Thou shalt not kill. Yes. Now, which side is he on? Cause yeah. He's on both sides, isn't he? You know, certainly the blue and the grey in America. Mm. They've got the same God, haven't they? Uh, England, uh, Master Moore, same God, isn't it? Charles I was the head of the church, and Oliver Cromwell was a devout Christian. Yeah, yeah. See where I'm coming from? Yeah. Well, when it comes to investigating... Yeah. What equipment do you consider being the best tool of the trade? You and your dog. You and your dog? <laughs> <laughs> Re Roxy, get ready. <laughs> That's it. All the others, as far as I'm concerned, are an aid. You know, I mean, yeah. right, for a start, okay, come on, come on. So you've got your, you've got your, uh, your, your, your thermometer, you know, and everyone's buzzing around with, it, with their laser you know, oh, and someone, and someone zaps, the, you know, the, the, the little red spot comes on, and what does it do? Record the temperature of the wall where it is. Yeah. So what good's that? Yeah, this is it. See, what you need, for, for example, right, so it's, oh, it's really cold around this area here, so you need some form of, of, of thermometer that's got a probe that you dangle in the atmosphere where the person says there's a drop in temperature. Mm. And that records, but it only, all it proves is, oh, yes, the temperature's dropped. It doesn't prove there's a ghost there. Yeah. The only thing that does that, I'm afraid, is you. Yeah, well, this is it. Or your dog. Or your yeah. Or your horse. And that's about it, because they're the only animals that seem to see ghosts as well. Have you heard of these ghost box things? Yes, I have. Well, sceptics have said <laughs> yeah. that investigators hear what they are expecting to hear as an, in an answer. Um, have you ever used one yeah. of these ghost box? And what question would you ask that would not be considered biased? 
Oh, blimey, that's so But yes, I have used I mean, I've got uh, um, an Ovilus. Ovilus, yeah. But the guy actually that made them actually did me a, a, an actual, a real a proper one when I was in America with my name on it. Mm. Presented it to me. And this, it's been a few years ago now. It had got 500 words in it, you know. And, yeah, you ask questions. And, and you know, I tell you what, I'll be honest with you. I do think that a, that a ghost box of some sort would probably be quite easy for a spirit, uh, an energy, or whatever you want to call it, to be able to communicate with you, because I think the whole thing's down to energy. And so, you know, like they can switch lights off, upset your computer, your phone, then really and truly they should be able to influence a ghost box uh, to be able to pick the word, because remember they ain't got a voice box themselves. So to be able to manipulate a mach- um, an energy source like a, a ghost box, an ovulus or whatever you want to call it, uh, Frank's box or whatever, then it, it should be easy. I've never really, to be honest with you, had a, lot, a great deal of success with them. Um, but I don't know, what, what, what question would I ask? Mm. Would actually be unbiased and, and try and get some, I don't know. <laughs> I really don't mm. yeah. I, um, no, I don't. Do you know, I, I actually don't think I can answer that. <laughs> Is there anybody there? Yeah, yeah. Have you ever heard of something called the REM pod? No, don't know. No, I have not either. Um, Ian's just asked, what is your views on them, and if you've ever used one? Well, if you don't know what it is, even I don't, I'm afraid. <laughs> I'm a great believer in... But this isn't really just the fact that I'm, I'm branded as a historian, but I am a great believer in, in using the old mm. the old ways, the old, um, you know, dousing crystal, um, uh, dousing rods, and I use uh, hazel twigs and that sort of stuff, you know, the, the, the old yeah. sort of rowan twigs and that sort of stuff. Um, uh, glass divination and, and tables and, you know, I don't like Ouija boards, by the way. Not not because I'm frightened of them. No. Just, I, I just find them, uh, I never seem to have a lot of success with them. No, so... Um, gobbledygook mm. is what you, I, I believe you get a lot of the time, but that's just me, that's just my, my views on it. So I, I favour the old, the old ways. Yeah, um... Don't forget, guys, if you want to give us a ring on uh, Skype, you can do so and speak to Richard yourself if you want to ask any questions. Yeah, come on, chap. <laughs> but until then, uh, they're sending them all in the chat room at the moment. Um, right, OK, let's see what we've got here. Um, Helen asks us, whose ghost would you like to meet? Um, her, uh, meet, she said. Um, Hers is Doris Stokes, Catherine Cookson or Andrew, uh, Agatha Christie. Sorry, sir, what, what is that? So who would I like to meet? What? No, that, hers is actually Doris Stokes, Catherine Cookson. Oh, and Andrew, sorry, uh, yeah, right. What, who would you like to meet? I would love to meet uh, Captain Lewis Edward Nolan, who is the guy that uh, is reputed to have caused the charge of the Light Brigade. Right. Because <laughs> I'd like to ask him what really happened. Yeah. <laughs> One of the biggest disasters. I suppose I'd like to speak to Captain Smith as well. Titanic. Um, and oh gosh, gosh, once you start, once you open the floodgates. Elvis that? Presley, Buddy Holly? <laughs> well, no, not really, but not really. Yeah, it's very much part of my 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 life, of course, because of, of the music industry. Yeah. It would really be historical for America yeah. Scott, so I'd like to find out what really happened there. Did she really murder her husband in Edinburgh? Yeah. Um, not, oh gosh. All thoughts. Henry VIII, John would like to know in Minnesota whether you've ever investigated anything to, that deals with him. To do with Henry VIII? Yeah. I'm thinking hard where I've been that <laughs> connections with Henry. Uh, I believe Dover Castle. Dover Castle? Has, has connections with Henry VIII. And of course, we, we did the very first uh, Most Haunted Live Christmas one. Yeah. Dover, which was quite good. It, as far as I remember, it didn't come through. Mm. I don't think. But, uh, I mean, he was a... He's someone that, that is a torment. He... he He's still around. Yeah. Trust me. He's <laughs> around because of what he did. 
Uh, we, we, we always sit back and think, um, you've got Leslie Smith, haven't you? Yeah. And uh, she does, uh, was it Mary Queen of Scots? Scots, Queen Elizabeth. <laughs> this person, she is everywhere. Her ghost is seen everywhere. Yeah, Mary Queen of Scots. Yeah, what would you say to that? Is that, you know... I'll say to that, shall I? Pardon? This is part of my, my, my theories, right? Um, she haunts just about every place that she ever had anything to do with. Yeah. Including some places that she really didn't like. Mm. Including Tubbury Castle. Uh-huh. Where, of course, uh, Leslie is. <clears throat> but the funny thing is, she actually doesn't haunt the place where she was executed. Fotheringay Castle in Northamptonshire. Right. And she had a terrible death. She had the sort of death that should cause a haunting. Mm. It took the execution of three blows to actually take her head off. Right. She, she she had a terrible, terrible, terrible death. Yeah. And yet she doesn't haunt that place, but she haunts all these other places. Right, we see this is where my, uh, this is back to my recording um, energy um, things held in the fabric of the building. Mm -hmm. uh, right? Because you see, when you, <laughs> when you meet someone that has got extra energy, mm. more charisma, um, more presence than most people, which had and that's why she was so famous in other words to be famous you're going to have you've got to have a little bit something extra to what most of us have got you see where I'm coming from you know you yeah. have a presence you have to have a, an energy an extra energy uh, uh, and call it charisma right now when you meet that person you often say do you know he left a real impression on me mm. now do you not think that her energy her presence and everything else also left a real impression of her self on the buildings that she was in. And so, in other words, you, you, you're getting some form of recording of her presence, her energies, in the fabric of the building that certain people, at a certain time, for a certain reason, see again. Yeah. And that's why I, you know, and we call it a ghost, because it's the image of a dead person. Oh, I see. I okay. Think. Well, in a minute, I'm going um, to actually... Um, ask you to do a task for me if that's okay right what we normally do is we have a haunted feature yeah okay and um we normally pick an area we've done lancaster we've done manchester etc and it'll be good to do derby tonight considering hey. you're there so in a moment um i'm going to be asking you a few places that you would recommend or you feel is haunted if that's okay uh, but before we go there um we'd like to know what you're doing now what you've been up to i know you've got a moment. show coming up on friday yes i have yes you yeah. you had a big um uh response to the halloween ghost fest oh yeah you know so tell us what's happening in richard well, felix's uh, life we're doing this show um which is um, an interactive uh, live, live show, uh, theatre, mm -hmm. theatre show and ghost fest uh, around the country um, called Psychic and Science. Right. When two worlds collide and think about it, and this is me and Derek, and obviously Derek's producing the, the psychic side of it, but the beauty of it is that when you get him on stage and you, you get down to the real Derek Sakura, there's so much more to him. Yeah his theories about and this is what people want to hear you see his theories about what ghosts are which is very similar to mine mm. and so we've got this sort of three hour show where Derek does just a few readings nothing much because everybody wants that but the rest of the show is, is, is to be honest with you what most haunted live should have been yeah oh can you pass me that phone two seconds my phone's just died Hello? Oh, he's gone all together. Hang up. Put that on there for me. My phone's just died. I had a feeling it would. Let me ring him back. Oh, run. This is going to be two, three, three, five. Let's hope you can hear me on this one because this yeah, one. Yeah, bear with be, us, guys. Won't be your last name. Oh, okay, let's try again. This could be difficult. <laughs> Hello? My phone died, so I'm hoping this isn't a hands free one, so I'm hoping they can still hear you. Hold the line. Right, can you hear him, guys? Can you speak, speak for me, please? Is nobody hearing you? We're not hearing him. We're not hearing him. Hold on. Um, I don't think anyone's hearing you on this. I'm going to have to do it on my mobile, so I'll ring you on the mobile, OK? All right, bye. Hold on, I'll ring him on the mobile. Two seconds. 
Oh dear me. Technology. What are we doing with it? Not a lot. I should have put the phone on charge. That's the trouble. Right. Okay. I'm going to stick this on just in case as well. Where's your phone thing? Are you there? Uh, Hello? Is he calling? Top, Loudspeaker. Yeah. Top. On the top. Hello. All right. Hello. Yeah. Right. Okay. Let's talk. Can you hear him now, guys? <clears throat> Can you hear me, guys? Is there anybody there? <laughs> Can you hear him? Yeah, they got him. Right. Okay. Try now. Okay. okay. Where was we? Derby. <laughs> we was in. Right. We was talking about uh, Richard Felix. Uh, sorry, Derek. Oh yes. We were yes. talking about me and Derek. Yes. And the show. Yeah. That's right. And basically, the situation is that the, the whole idea of this show is is to get the audience involved. Uh, and they come up on stage and do everything from glass, glass movement to table tilting, seance, uh, um, you name it. Hey, there's a funny noise going on there. Yeah, yeah, I think it's because it's the mobile. Oh, right. I'm okay. <laughs> um, Which is a bit annoying. <laughs> yeah, keep talking. Um, I think they can still hear yeah, you, OK? Yeah, and, and basically the whole idea is to, is to try and uh, get the, the audience involvement in, in the show. Yeah. Which, which they haven't done to the door. Um, and then we said people have been alone vigil into the, the haunted part of the theatre or wherever we have to be, which they love. Uh, and at the end of it, we have this amazing finale because we've created this machine to try and prove what I'm saying about um, a recording held in the public of the building. And we zap the wall of the haunted building with with this machine, which zaps electricity into it, and we try and get an image to come out of the fabric of the building, and we get the whole of the audience to do a Robbie Williams with their cameras, and their phones, taking yeah. photographs, and you can see some of the images that people have brought up already. It really is quite something. Which, in other words, they're trying to think of what it's all about. Yeah. Live on live on stage. And it's really going extremely well. People are loving it. It's very good. Is it likely to be on TV at all? Well, who knows? I mean, to be honest with you, uh, um, Derek was talking to a TV producer uh, two weeks ago, uh, uh, invited him to the show. Because yeah. it's, again, it's different. And, and if, I'll be honest with you, if nothing happens, guys, oh dear, sorry, it's nothing happens. Yeah. But we've never had it yet. But it, you know, so there's no fakery, no... no Whatsoever, it, it's full of, and you know the public are loving it. Uh, and we're doing a whole series of uh, theatre near you. Yeah. Next, next year. So Andy T went. Andy Taylor said he went. He said it was a good night. Yeah. Well, I'm very pleased about that because it, it is. It's, uh, we're obviously um, working on it. That things things happen. You know, like, uh, how can I put this? We're we're fine tuning it. The more we do it, the more we, we find out what the public wants and what they don't want and, and that sort of stuff. But it's, it's a great show and it's something so different yeah. to what anyone's ever, ever seen before. It's a paranormal mm. game as well, that's the beauty of it. And it gets you and the public there with us, doing things, which is what everybody wants. Are you going to Essex at all? Uh, I'm sure we will. Um, I've already, I've done it, I've done it, Ghost of Ethics on DVD, so that's as far as I've got it. I'm sure, we're looking at, I'll be honest with you, anybody got the haunted theatres, let us know, because we are looking, because the whole idea of it is it's got to be a, well, it hasn't got to be, but it's so much better if we are talking of a haunted location to do it in, haunted theatre. So are you saying that Elscar is, ca- is haunted? Yeah. Oh. Well, I mean, we, don't forget we did the, um, we actually did most of life. Oh yeah. Uh, you know, the mining uh what's the word mining museum uh, um, and we've got a uh, lot of people coming already. I mean don't get me wrong with it. Uh, all houses great men have lived and died at haunted houses. So even if even if it isn't haunted, there's, there's every possibility that some some spirits will come through on the night. That yeah. happens with of course with Derek. But it's so much better if we've got in my opinion, anyway, a uh, pedigree of a good haunting in the theatre. But you see, the big one is, I'll tell you that, I don't, uh, there's hardly a theatre in the British, in the world, I don't believe has a ghost. No. Because, because they are the sort of places, you know, with energy, emotion, and, and everything, you know, um, uh, where, where spirits linger. 
Yeah, well, we've had a few suggestions for you. Uh, Oldham okay. Coliseum. Yeah, we're going to do that. We're on, we're on to that one. Uh, the Palace Theatre in South End. Oh, right. No, I don't know. That's right. Palace Theatre South End. Yeah. Um, and what? um, what's this one? Uh, let me see. That was a question. Uh, what was the other? Oh, Tameside Hippodrome's going to be opening soon. Tameside Yeah, in Ashton Underline. Yeah, they're they're oh, trying. Right. Um, basically, it's um, a charity that's opening it, so they're all in force to start doing that next year. Oh, nice idea. You know, so uh, maybe they're already Tameside booking in. They're already booking in performances and stuff for next year. Sounds interesting. You know, so. I mean, it's got a ghost, does it? And we know that one's haunted. And we know that one's haunted. <laughs> oh, well. You know, so, um, you know. Hey, if there's any chance, if you get any more, if people can, if you could email them through to me, it would not be appreciated. Yeah, well, there you go, guys. And you can even email it to us at admin um, at ktpf.co.uk and we'll send them on to uh, Richard. Or at admi awesome. admin at richardfelix.co.uk, I think it is, isn't yes, it? Please. Yes, please. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, um, we have um, a few other questions for you before we go into haunted um, uh, Derby. Derby. Yeah. Uh, let me see what we got here. Um, what are your thoughts on both? Um, is it Pendle Hill or Pendle Hill? I think he means Pendle, Pendle, Pendle Hill. Hill. And what is your views on Borley Rectory? Oh boy! Right. <laughs> very hard. right Borley Rectory. Well, you, you know, you said that you paid something like two and a half thousand pounds for. Brand Castle. Yeah. Well, I actually, I we paid two thousand pounds to hire the bungalow that is on the site of the dining room of Borley Rectory. Wow. On on the night that the, the nun is supposed to walk, uh, and the nun's walk is actually in the back of of this bungalow, and all we saw all that was a badger. Wow. <laughs> a live, wow. a live badger. But so what? That's amazing. So I, I, I believe that Borley Rectory was was blown up out of all proportion uh, by Harry Price, yeah. who was, for want of a better word, a compulsive liar. So, <laughs> so uh, there you have it, guys. <clears throat> okay. I, I didn't realise till I didn't realise till we're not that long ago that he used to drive a bloody rent at Bentley. <laughs> I made a lot of money out God. of his ghost hunting. Um, but there you go. So, what? Well, somebody wants to know why oh. why football grounds aren't haunted. We had a few that are oh, supposed to be haunted. That aren't there haunted. Are, are. I know. I um, I know one. I mean, I know for a fact that Birmingham Birmingham, Birmingham City's haunted uh, football ground is extremely haunted. Mm. Uh, when I did the Ghost of the West Midlands. I, I got this wonderful story, and they wouldn't let me put it in because they were they were a bit frightened about people um, cancelling their uh, cancelling their um, season tickets. Would you believe? <laughs> <laughs> they are haunted. Yeah, they well, are haunted. Mm. Derby's baseball ground was haunted. Um, lots of football grounds are haunted. Again, <laughs> like theatres, they're places of emotion. Oh, I don't know. Well, anyway, we're going to go into haunted Derby. Okay, and I'm sorry that it's yes. on the mobile, but I hope everyone can hear you okay. Don't worry All right. about that. Don't worry about that. Right. But, uh, as I say, <laughs> um, we are doing this from our house. It's not an actual radio show. <laughs> but it, well, it's not a studio as such, so uh, it's just our little way of getting it out there to people. Okay? So, um, yes. as I say, um, Haunted Derby. So you've got Derby Jail on Friargate, which is said to be yes. one of the most haunted in the country. Can you tell us it's why? Haunted. Why? Gosh, it's because it's mine. No, it's not. It's nothing to do with that. I mean, uh, all, all prisons, again, like battlefields, uh, they've got the ingredients of all the things that cause ghosts still to be around. And I don't know what a lot of uh, the devil that done before were were terrible, terrible places to be to be imprisoned. Um, murder, suicide, execution, terror, torment, pain, anguish. You know, I mean, if you you cannot imagine the the, the things that would have gone on in a jail mm. like that in, in the olden days. I mean, you'd be murdered for the coat off your back. Um, debtors were imprisoned and either starved to death or committed suicide. 
from from the year 1750. There were 222 hanging offences in Great Britain that people were hung for. Yeah. Um, and and in front of my jail, I mean, we, we had two guys committed suicide. The Jones brothers hanged themselves in their cell the night before their execution. Uh, we had three men hanged, beheaded in front of the jail in, in 1817. Uh, a girl of 16 hanged. Uh, four men hanged for setting fire to a haystack. Mm. Um, you know, I mean, it's it's got a pedigree. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, and I've seen a ghost in that building at 20 past 3 on a Friday afternoon. Wow. So, I'll have to come over it, there sometime and have a look. You must. It's a must-do place. It's very, we have people that come and do events. It's, it's, <coughs> yeah, but you you do cater you do cater for the for the companies though, don't you? Say that again, my love. You cater for the companies more than the non-profit groups. Um, not really. No, we don't actually don't cater for companies. Oh, right. um, there, there is all, there are almost no companies, very few, that actually come and hire a jail. It's mainly the public. Oh right, I see. Uh, uh, oh yeah, very very much so actually. I mean, I'm just trying to think who. Who's been to Derby Joe? Um, what's its game once? Um, Haunted Happenings came once. Yeah. Um, that was it. I'm thinking it's very, honestly, very few. Funnily enough, very, very few. Perhaps they stay away because, I don't know, because it's me. <laughs> <laughs> we don't actually get many companies. And how long have you owned, how long have you had it for? 14 years. How long? 14 years. 14 or 40? One, one four. Fourteen, right. And Fourteen that, years, yeah. And it was just something you wanted, is that how you got it? Oh, Somebody's just very asking. Much so. Yeah. Yeah, basically because you know, because of A it's history, but B it's 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 pedigree of hauntings in the building and the number right. of, of first hand first hand accounts that I've had from people over the years uh, mm. about the building. It, it's, and I know it's haunted because I've seen it goes to it. Yeah. We did Derby Hospital before it closed down. Oh, yes, yes. What's your That's feelings haunted. about that? Well, well it's haunted. Um, all hospitals, again, are haunted. But, but the amazing thing is that most hospitals aren't haunted by patients. No. They're haunted by dedicated staff. Yeah. That stayed behind, that still think they're there, the matron, Dr. So and so, the sister, the, the nurse, that they, it was their life, their life, and they're still there. I believe the, the the new one is haunted as well or something. Yeah, yeah the Royal. Is yeah. haunted as well. Two, two reports in the last eight weeks yeah. of, of the little grey nurse that brings a red pan in the night. Okay. Well, can you tell us? Can you tell us about two or three places in Derby that you yeah. you consider haunted, and why? Oh yeah, I mean, very, very, very haunted is the old uh, the bell in in Sadlergate in Derby. Right. Uh, that, that's a real stonking place, that is. And, and Room 29, which is the very, very top attic rooms, uh, haunted by the ghost of a serving girl, uh, that's, that's usually seen in connection with children. Um, and that's, that's very haunted. In fact, only the, it's actually empty at the moment, and very dilapidated, um, in a terrible condition, and a, a guy, uh, that I know very well is hopefully taking it over in the very near future, mm. uh, turning into a boutique hotel, um, a microbrewery outside, but leaving the attic rooms at the top for ghost hunters, mm. which is really exciting, really exciting, and it's very hot, it's a very good place. Um, that's a belt. Then we've got, of course, the tunnels, the old uh, tunnels underneath Derby Guildhall, yeah. which, which are uh, haunted by... Well, one or two does, but especially the ghost of a little boy of, of about six, yeah. uh, called called Little Sammy, who, who well was first disturbed, first seen in 1973, uh, and is still there now. Still, they knocked the old building down um, on the near the side, and as, as, there's a number of demolition men and builders that see ghosts. You'll believe it, mm -hmm. um, and it's been around ever since. And, and it, it, the, the building now that's on top of on top of where, where the demolition took place, the Royal Bank of Scotland, and this is gospel truth, this is, the, the manager of the Royal Bank of Scotland still keeps a diary 
mm. the paranormal activity that's going on in the building. Wow. And he's seen it, he's seen frequently in the tunnels underneath Derby Guildhall, mm. um, which again is a must-do place. Um, yeah. Oh, I could keep going all, all that. I mean, you know, we've got well over 150 um, different hauntings in the city in the city centre. And when I say 100, I'm talking about first-hand accounts of people that have seen, seen the ghost, heard them, sensed them, smelt them, felt them, uh, all around the city. Uh, and, and, and new stories coming in, you know, all the time. Yeah. Um, it, it, it's a hotbed of, of paranormal activity. One, one of the big reasons is its location yeah. in the centre of the country. Uh, it's the most central city in Great Britain, and, and it's, it's all down to ley line. Uh, mm. Water, seven underground streams flowing underneath the centre of Derby, uh, and a river going through the centre. And being being the crossing of the ways, um, ley lines passing through as well, mm. which I think causes a lot of the whole things. It's a very haunted city. Do you know anything about the Tiger Bar and the fish market? Yeah, Tiger Fish Market. Fantastic story in the fish market, of course, um, of a policeman that was murdered there in, in 1879, uh, shot in the police station uh, by a drunk who'd got a revolver. Nobody searched him, and he, he, he shot at the policeman and, and two others as well, but they lived. And um, the ghost of the policeman still haunts the area, um, which was, was is now a fish market. Mm. Um, but the fascinating story about him is the fact that he's the only policeman that was ever murdered in Derbyshire, and he, he is the only policeman that's ever been murdered in the police station wow. on mainland Britain. So it's got a hell of a story behind it. Yeah. Um, and I've actually got his grave, gravestone in, in Derby Jail. Wow. But he doesn't haunt it. He doesn't come no. back to it. In fact, he, he, but he, he's been seen by all sorts of people in, yeah. in and around the fish market in the yard and all sorts of things. So that's a stonking story, that is, yeah. So how much is it to actually visit the Derby Jail during the day? Derby Jail is £3. Right. £2 for children. Right. But we're only open on Saturdays, but we open, obviously, like Christmas holidays, uh, summer holidays, Easter holidays, that sort of thing. And we're actually just in the process, by the, by the Christmas holidays, we'll have Derby Police Museum open down there as well. Wow, good. Which is going to be quite. Which is telling all we've got murder weapons and all sorts of bizarre things in there that you know sort of help help with the ghost business as well. But uh, yeah. I don't think we'll be able to get around the Christmas time for that. This is it. Um, and um, obviously you've got Friday coming up. Looking forward to that. I'm looking forward to Elfscar very much. Yeah, that's been a good one. And then after that, um, Cornwall. After Christmas, Cornwall, <laughs> Truro. In I think it's the thirtieth. Right. Of, of, of January, and then we start with because we're now just starting the book um, theatres around the country. So hopefully we'll be coming to see everybody. Hopefully, yeah, and Manchester. <laughs> yeah, oh God, we've got to come and do. We'd well, be nice to do the Royal Exchange in Manchester, wouldn't it? Mm, it would be. So you'll have to keep that me informed. Be. Don't forget, oh, well, we have stuff. We have the paranormal events for you, and we can put it all on there. Okay. So, yeah, that'd be great. You know, and don't forget, you've got to do Derby as well, Andy said. You've got to go back to Derby. Oh, yeah. Okay. Well, we, I tell you what we're doing now, every year, when you see, we, we, with the success of the Derby one this, this year, what we're doing, we're going to do four ghost fests a year. Mm. England, Ireland, Scotland and Wales. Um, so, again, where, where should we go to, guys? Let me know. Uh, we're planning on doing ha Halloween at Derby every year, because being the most haunted city in Great Britain, I think it's, it's right that we need to do um, Derby. But, you know, we need to do a Scottish Ghost Fest, uh, a Welsh Ghost Fest, and an Irish Ghost Fest. That'd be good, wouldn't it? It would be good. It'd be great. Yeah, so, yeah. we've been well, asked... Let you know when you want to come to. Let you know when I want to come? Did you yeah. say? <laughs> I will do that. Yeah. I will do that. Yeah, do that. And then hopefully we'll yeah. meet each other. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Have a drink and what have you. <laughs> Sounds good to me. Look, some spirits behind the bar. Yes, definitely. I've been asked <laughs> to ask you how much it costs to hire the Derby Jail overnight. That's a very good question. We do, we do, we do um, every month we do a, a, a public night vigil yeah. that starts at nine starts at nine finishes about four o'clock and that's 45 pounds per person okay um 
and that's with uh, you get sort of uh, prison food, jail broth, no, it's a leaf potato soup, uh, a chunk of cheese and, and a, a big lump of bread and that sort of stuff, uh, and then there's a bar there all night. Um, and, but if, if a group wants to book it... Now, now before fun. you carry on, now, yes, right remember on. this is going to go out on YouTube, yeah? Yeah, yeah. Now, you can yeah. either broadcast the price for a group to book it, or you can email me and I can let them know discreetly. No, don't mind. I can broadcast it. Go great. for it then. Go for it. Yeah, no. So, yeah, £45 pounds per person um, to come on a night vigil for the public. Mm -hmm. uh, if, if, if a group wants to book it, then it, it, it's £500 pounds for the night, but then with that you get uh, a couple of, you know, we get our team of mediums there and everything to do everything with you. Unless you want to do it with your own group, then, you know, they we obviously have to have someone with you. Yeah. It, that's for Fridays and Saturdays. Uh -huh. but if, if anybody wants it in the week, then it's cheaper. Right. But the, tr the trouble is people don't really want to stay up at night no. in the week because they're going to work. And or how many people much. How many people can you take for that amount of money? Well, tw 20 is, is we do, we do more if it's a group, if, if they don't mind, because it's not the biggest place uh, no. on the planet. And we reckon that t about 20 is a nice number um, to make it okay. You get more than 20 and you start... Too many people in each room, so yeah, but, yeah, but it's not very big, you see, right? So, okay. about 20 is a nice number, okay? So, there you go. We'll have to pop down one day and um, meet you and you have a drink and have a look. You must come and have a look, yeah, definitely. So, um, have you got apart from your tours that are coming up? Um, is um, what is a ghost your latest book, or have you got yes, another indeed. one? It is your latest. What, what, what is a ghost is the latest, yeah, it's um, a copy's gone to the Pope. I've got a copy of the Archbishop of Canterbury. Neither of them have replied to me yet, but <laughs> it's quite it's quite controversial. But but it's it's trying to get through to people the realities of what they get. And I hope I hope people will, if they've got the book or read it or want to read it will realise that that the realities behind the ghost business is actually far more fascinating than the Scooby Doo side of things. Yeah, it really is. So, so that's the latest book. Any more DVDs on the horizon? No, do you know I haven't done a DVD for three years. Uh, the last one I did was Ghosts of Devon. I've uh, been so busy with everything else that, that the ghost tour of Great Britain has stopped for the moment. Mm. But hopefully, hopefully we'll resurrect it soon. Let's come and do another one. I want to do Cambridgeshire. I've yeah. done that yet, and I'd like to do that one very much. Oh, right. oh, sorry, I'm also working on a new book. Oh, good. Ghosts of Greater, ghosts of Greater Manchester. Oh, really? Yes. Ah, right. I'd, yeah. like, I'd like a copy of that. <laughs> Yeah, I'll sort that out, but that's, that's going to be some time next year. Well, that'll be good. Um, have you... Now, I'm not... Pu pu um, what's the word? Um, Publicising this book, but have you ever have you ever seen portals? Have I ever seen... A portal. Have I ever seen a portal? Yeah. Not personally, no. Right, well, like one... <laughs> I'm getting Oh My God by Joe. But there's one of our, <laughs> one of our listeners, yeah, um, Nigel yeah. Mortimer, has written a book about yeah. a portal that is found in Settle. Settle? In Settle, in North yeah. Yorkshire, is it? Yeah. So, and basically, um, I'm going to go up there sometime in the near future to go and have a look. And Sounds very interesting. Yes. So, just a bit. and I was just wondering whether you'd like to join us sometime, just to have a look well, at yeah, a curiosity. Let, let me know when you're going. That sounds quite exciting. <laughs> I, I, I've never been to a pool before, so yeah, that sounds good. No, I haven't either. Yeah, I'd, I'd be interested in, in having a look at the book as well. So, you know, Bob. Um, well, well, it would be an idea, yeah. wouldn't it? So um, I'll yeah. um, arrange that, and I'll, I'll find out if you want. Really want that. If you want to go to his website, it's uh, all the W's, secretsundial dot That's Y O L A dot Yes. Okay, and um, pardon, the secret secret sundial. Dot mm. Yola site, y o l a site dot com. Yola site. Yeah. Well, come, I'll have a look at that. Yeah, That's and um, um, you know, we'll keep in contact with yeah. you, Richard. You do that. And uh, Helen and Nigel said you're very, very welcome. 
Okay. Yeah. So uh, to good. come up and have a look. Um, they've asked Great us stuff. to go up with our gadgets to see whether we can find anything. I want to throw something yeah. in there and yeah. see what comes back. Yeah. But um, yeah, so but it's yeah. Gadgets and energy thing, isn't it? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't, I mean, I'm interested. Do keep it posted. I will do. So, but as I say, um, somebody just said throw Nigel in. <laughs> but um, <laughs> but we was on about going up there sort of sometime before Christmas um, for the day or something. If you fancy yeah. it. Let me know. It might be difficult for me before Christmas because I'm not that much on. But you never know. You never know. Yeah. Okay. Well, we'll let you know. And if we can work yeah, around yeah. you, then obviously we can yeah. work around Nigel as well. If that's okay. <laughs> Yeah. All right. Yeah. So if you've got any free weekend dates or something, or even weekday maybe, um, see what. Yeah. Let us know. All right. Um, oh, my right. email is admin at ktpf.co.uk. Right. Super stuff. And don't forget, if you've got anything coming up, email it to me, and we'll be happy to put it on the show and put it on our uh, events page and everything. That's really nice of you. That's great news. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Right, um, it's, it's my been a pleasure. I've enjoyed it. Um, we've enjoyed you as well, Richard, and I do look forward to meeting you again. Well, meeting well, you. Well, I say again. I'm, I must admit, it is again, really, because we were at Blackpool. <laughs> we went to the the high, uh, the most haunted live at Blackpool, the um, wow. first one, <laughs> didn't we? Yeah. Yeah. So we would have yeah, been there. So you would have been there. Yeah, you and Richard Jones. So, so yes, yeah, so, and I've got your autograph here somewhere. <laughs> So, uh, unfortunately, it wasn't on the check. No, it wasn't on a check, I must admit. <laughs> <laughs> Never mind. Never but mind. anyway, <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you very much, and oh, I will hello. definitely be to see you before Christmas uh, down at Derby. Oh, good. All oh, right. Hello, thanks for that. Thank you, and, and talk, um, talk to you very soon. Good night and God bless. Thank you very much. All right, my love. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Right, I'll I'm off to bed, so night, guys. Look forward to next week, Wednesday. Yeah, night, thank Dad. you. Good night. Until next time, guys. What are we doing? Keeping, Keeping the, the paranormal, paranormal friendly. friendly. Good night and God bless. Good night, guys. Thank you. Hello, Harry Price here. Good evening. If there's nothing myself and everybody else enjoy here on the other side, more is the sit back and relax and listen to Parasearch Radio with its paranormal news, views and reviews from across the UK and beyond. Make sure to find out more about them on Facebook, Twitter and the World Wide Web whatever they are, to keep up to date with all their broadcasts throughout the week. And I hope you enjoy them as much as we do over here. Hello? Is anybody there?